Welcome. Uh, we are group five and we are going to discuss cola wars. Uh, first off, in the soft drink industry, we want to discuss their profitability. And they've been profitable due to the fact that they've relied on the Porter's Five Force model and then also the great uh, phenomenal marketing campaigns that they were able to put together. Uh, jumping right in, we have strong brand loyalty, which I feel is where and is where a lot of that lies. Uh, because of that and owning production and distribution channels, they were able to thwart a lot of the new entrants. Second, we have having strong competition, and we can definitely see that between Coke and Pepsi. And it hits on the rivalry among existing competitors. Then you have those buying the soft drink products, such as the bottlers and distributor, uh, distributors. They don't have much room to negotiate, which this allow, it doesn't allow a lot of the bargaining power. Then we have the suppliers, and they've become strong to where they've vertically integrated, and this has allowed them to own their own bottling plants and such, which gives the suppliers a high bargaining power. And finally, we have strong con uh, contractual agreements that they set up with uh, those that they sell to, and this is an exclusive uh, deal that they have with their uh, uh, with their with the people that they sell to. Uh, but we can see that this has been changing as we've moved through uh, time that they've even brought in uh, with their substitutes such as tea, water, juices, and sport drinks and some of the other uh, changing factors. So why is profitability so different between bottlers and concentrate producers? Well, when it comes to two uh, aspects of Porter's Five Forces, power of suppliers and power of buyers, we have a part of the answer there. The inputs when it comes to the power of suppliers for the concentrate business are relatively few, and they're largely commodities that they can acquire from multiple sources and at fixed costs. Whereas buyers have to rely on the concentrate producers, uh, plus they have their own inputs to produce on top of that. Uh, given that there's really only two large entities in the market and they control most of the concentrate business, bottlers are at the mercy of their concentrate suppliers. On top of that, these two large producers of concentrate, Coke and Pepsi, uh, have uh, shown historically that they're very willing to vertically integrate bottling operations when it makes sense, and they also dictate pricing, promotions, and other key market activities, and this increases the cost per sale and the ability for bottlers to make pricing demands. The power of buyers is low for the concentrate business as the demand is largely based on two entities' products. Bottlers have little choice but to purchase concentrates, and the argument could be made that they would not exist in the absence of these concentrate producers. Uh, the threat from buyers for uh, the, the bottlers of, a, of a concentrate products, such as Walmart and Costco, also erode the ability of bottlers to eke out higher profits, as Walmart, for instance, likes to deal with a single supplier and not multiple. In looking at just these two elements, it would seem that bottlers are heavily squeezed by their suppliers and their buyers and are not in a highly favorable position to demand pricing increases. So how does competition between Coke and Pepsi affect the industry profits? Well, um, one thing is the competition creates a barrier to entry for other competitors, which then drives um, up the industry profits for Coke and Pepsi, but not necessarily for other competitors. From this data in 2009, Coke and Pepsi kind of dominate the market. Um, another thing is they drive up high advertising costs. So because of the strong competition, advertisers are able to charge more for Coke and Pepsi to kind of fuel their competition. Um, in turn, Coke and Pepsi um, have, have um, entered price wars where both are trying to lower the price of their products. Um, this kind of trickles down to concentrators and bottlers, whereas concentrators can increase their prices um, to kind of absorb some of that profit. Um, bottlers, on the other hand, because of what Gabe described, cannot do so, and so they really suffer. Um, at the beginning of these wars, um, there was an increase in consumer base uh, for these products, but you could you could see that the pro profits overall in the industry actually went up. But now that there are these alternatives to concentrate, um, these profits are basically staying level or even starting to decline. 
And finally, we wanted to talk about some of the ways that Coke and Pepsi could sustain their profits. Um, we thought about they should expanding their selection a little bit, so maybe invest in some flavored bottled water, um, as well as maybe using the term all natural beverages to develop some, some um, choices there. Um, we also thought about going into the health markets using the pre and post workout beverages, maybe protein drinks, something like that. Uh, we also wanted to have Coke and Pepsi expand into international markets. There's still a, a large gold mine there that, that can be tapped into. Uh, and finally, we were thinking outside the little, uh, out of the box a little bit um, and thought that maybe they should develop and promote some beverages that are created with clean energy. Maybe the, the bottlers or something can use clean energy and bring in that market as well. And we thought that that would be a good way for the two companies to sustain their profits going forward.